Hello, everybody in the YouTube land. This is Five for Talking, NHL edition. I'm here with Caps, one of those sides. He's the host of the show. I just like to do the intro because I'm the bro you know. Okay, so let's jump right into this. I keep opening the same thing. Uh, I want to start off. We have big news coming later, but I want to start off with this. I saw a bunch of um, hockey videos lately and the Kiprios uh, podcast and the Kiprios' podcast today with Don McLean really made me think that maybe this is true. And I didn't think this prior, but uh, I have seen it multiple times now. Uh, the trade that Winnipeg made with Columbus was really Dubois for the draft picks and Ross Levick. They didn't want Line. Line was packaged into the deal to, to make the salary cap work in the trade. Uh, because Columbus was not interested in getting Line 8 and Winnipeg just wanted to get rid of him. That's what I'm hearing. Uh, do you think there's any truth to that? It's possible. Um, <clears throat> maybe they had an idea of what they were getting and possibly that he has a bad reputation or a bad attitude. Um, and it looks like it's coming into fruition because obviously now – He's having issues with Tortorella, or Tortorella is having issues with him. So it looks like, and I think we, we explained this, or we talked about this maybe two episodes ago, that, you know, how long is it going to take before Tortorella starts having a problem with uh, Liney? You And so, it's funny because you actually, that was your first thought, even before we saw him play a game. Your first thought was him and Tortorella are not going to get along. And we and Bargo even said, I don't know, they, I think they will. And I was like, I don't know, right? But I don't know. It, it seems iffy. Tortorella is all about building a good team. Uh, and his team is all about defending as well as forechecking. As hard well nose as play. I, I hard agree. nose play. Like, it, it, like if I were to look at it, they are a bunch of – Two-way players. I'm talking about defensemen and forwards. I think they, so. They, even even they, with the addition of Max Domi, you you still kind of bring yourself some of that. Yeah, they they contribute offensively as well as well as defensively. And I look at Liney, and he is not that player. I agree. Now, whether or not he turns into that, uh, there's going to be a lot of. Uh, ups and downs along the way. There's going to be a lot of growing pains, of you know, from Liney, because um, Tortorella is not going to have any of it. Um, so that's that's all it depends on Liney and what he does. So in terms of answering your question, um, do I feel as though it was a cap uh, situation uh, to put Liney into the deal? Possibly. Because uh, I think, yes, I think they knew what they were getting in, in that type of player. Uh, cool. Last question on this subject. Um, do you think that Patrick Laine, like he seems to be like a difficult player to work with. Do you do you see him being like more like P.K. Subban where he kind of straightened out his path? Or do you see him being more like Evander Kane where 15 years in the NHL, he's still a mess? Are you talking about the way Lonnie is playing right now? Like the way that they their attitude is as a player. I think he's more like Sigan, who thinks he's uh, big shit. I actually completely forgot about King Sigan. Shit. I you forgot I mean? about that. That's a really good. That's a really good comparison. Because uh, honestly, I, I yeah. still see value in in, in Subban. I see value in Sigan too. Like I think what he's doing with Dallas is. Is a lot better than what he was doing with Boston. I um, see more value in Sagan if that's really. Yeah. So, who's your other uh, example? Subban, because Subban kind of was hard to deal with. And then once he got traded, he realized that he didn't really want to leave Montreal, but it was but his had, attitude. But you had somebody else. No, Kane. Uh, Evander Kane. Kane. Yeah. Um, Kane's just messed up. He's just finding his way. He's just, he's, he's a lost cause right now, man. Like, yeah. I really wish. I hope that he does come back, but right now he's uh, he's out of it. Like that yeah. whole um, like he owes money or some stuff like that. He had to yeah, file for to bankruptcy, a lot of places. right? He owes money to banks, to casinos, to all kinds of things. So, anyways, yeah, we talked about that in the other episode. I don't want to get too much into that. I'm gonna jump quickly into this. Uh, speaking of my hat, Stamkos 
injured again, as usual. He's not out, but he's playing that day-to-day game style right now. And I don't know if that guy will ever be able to stay healthy. And it's definitely put a damper on his career. But Tampa Bay is still winning without Stamkos playing every game and without Kucherov. And Brady Point team. looks great. They're a stacked team. I mean, they have enough depth, depth players. It's uh, Kucherov is he's gone for the season, right? I believe it's the whole season. Okay. Um, Brendan Point and um, uh, Victor Hedman are and Vasilevsky are, are carrying this team on their shoulders. And I think you're right. That team is deep. three great players too. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Sir, uh, uh, Sergeyev, he's on there. Like, they're, they're doing they, – they got some great players, man. Fargo says he's going to be on at 7, eh? He has a chance he might make an appearance. All right. Well, oh, I, I'm snap. willing to wait for that episode. Oh, snap. So, let's just continue with this one see what happens. All right. You keep me posted on that because I don't have notifications on because I'm that guy. Um, But just to end on this, I, know, I don't know if you were trying to go somewhere there, but I just think Braden – Braden Point, I, I was like, what team am I on? Uh, is such a, such a good player that he's doing what he's doing without Kucherov. And like a lot of people, even you said this, that you thought he was good, but a lot of his success banked on Kucherov. And now we're all seeing that. that <laughs> you know, it's, it's so funny. I, I don't mean to cut you off, but uh, um, there was a panel, like the TSM panel with uh, Jeff O'Neill, right? Yeah. Uh, last year, not last year, that not October that passed, the yeah, October before that. Mm-hmm. Um, and they were, they had the panel, uh, the overdrive panel, and they were talking about who was the hardest. They were talking about who was the most valuable player on Tampa, and all the uh, according to Jeff O'Neill, uh, all the coaches and a lot of the players think Brendan Point is the most valuable player on that team. It on looks like it. Trail, most excuse me, sorry, the hardest working player on that team. Uh, is is Brendan Point? It looks like and, it, and not Kucherov. So, looks like it. No. Uh, let's so keep I, this going. I don't want to hear you anymore. I don't, I, I don't doubt that he's going to have success, man. He's he's a great player. I've had absolutely enough of you for two minutes. Um, right. Okay, so quickly, I want to talk about this. The top six teams right now in the NHL are all Eastern Conference teams. Okay. Five of those six teams are from the Atlantic division. So this year, if we went back to regular divisions, the Leafs would be playing again, playing with the five top teams in the NHL, them included as one of them. Isn't that crazy? I'll tell you the teams. So, you know, it's Toronto, Boston, Tampa Bay, Florida, Montreal, and then Philadelphia is the other Eastern conference team. That's not from the Atlantic. Isn't that crazy? Five out of the eight teams would have been the top five teams in the NHL. I think we weren't that surprised with uh, those teams because I think we picked all those teams with the exception of Florida. Yeah. Uh, being on top of the NHL right now or having uh, or, or having a lot of wins. Um, but Florida is probably the only surprise because I thought uh, I thought they were just they, they lost a lot of players and they had no chemistry coming into this season. I didn't think that they were going to be as successful. So, but everybody else. No surprise. Okay, so I'm I'll move surprised. on from that. I'll talk about some disappointments quick before we get into what I really want to talk about. Uh, well, Florida's 8-1-2. and two. I just want to put that out there at this point. Uh, that's insane. Uh, I still think they're riding the hot wave right now, and I feel like they're going to fall off, but right now they're doing good. Three huge disappointments to me. The New York Rangers, the Buffalo Sabres, and the Nashville Predators. Like it, the, the amount of talent on those teams on every aspect in the net, on defense, on offense, in their coaching staffs, how are they not playing well? Um, I don't think we could be surprised by Buffalo. Uh, I think every I off season, every off season, they try and make all these trades, bring in players to help their team. And then for some odd reason, there's no chemistry uh, they don't end up doing well. Yet again, Jeff uh, Eichel is having a great season. Jack Eichel? Jeff, Jeff Eichel. Jack <laughs> Eichel. Sorry. I, I didn't have my espresso today. Oh, that's um, fair. 
And who are the other two teams that you're talking about? Nashville Predators. Nashville and New York Rangers. And the Rangers. And let, let's point this out. The last episode we have, we were talking about uh, Lafreniere only having one point. He still only has one point. It's still that goal that he scored. Yeah. But Panarin is killing it right now. Yeah. I think I, – I know we want to do a whole episode about drafts. Um, but Kako, last year's pick and this year's pick um, – Lafreniere, they're both not playing well. Like Kako had back to back not good seasons at this point, and together they have four points in thirteen games. I'm not even going to try and attempt to say his last name, La- La- Lafreniere. Yeah, you're close enough. It. He's Laffy. Uh, he's what nineteen? Yeah. I mean, I'm not. Saying get over like it's over, but I'm just you know okay. I'm moving on because I don't like what you're saying. I don't He's like what you're saying to me. Um, so, <sighs> uh, okay, so this is the big news: Pittsburgh Penguins, the big three. Uh, was I'm, I'm gonna give you stats. It's just yes, was, he was is. Was uh, Tang ever considered? Yeah, he uh, is. Of course. Okay. All right. If if who's the third best person on their team? I just always thought it was Malkin and Crosby. That's it. Yeah, okay. Well, you got big three now. Get over it. <laughs> All right. Okay, so the three of them combined. His career stats are actually surprising. Like, I, I didn't think of it like that. But combined, in 15 seasons of playing together, they have 200, two, sorry, 2,898 points and three Stanley Cups. So Pittsburgh apparently has promised if they that they're not they're going to shop them, but they won't trade them against their if they don't want to be traded in the end they won't trade them. But they've apparently promised that they will make sure they get traded to a playoff team and not to a a bottom feeder. Who's going to take on those 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 uh, contracts? Pittsburgh will probably retain because I see these trades as a complete rebuild. If they trade all three, let's just say it happens all three, okay, you're going to end up back with. Uh, three or four young guys, a bunch of draft picks, and maybe some prospects. I don't see them taking on any major contracts unless it's expiring, like a guy on his last year. Okay. Brian Burke and Hextall. Oh, Brian Burke's in Pittsburgh, everybody. And Hextall. Sorry. Hextall's there too? Brian Burke is president's, uh, president oh, of I Hawk Operations. I didn't know. Ron Hextall is a GM. Oh, I did okay. not know that. Now, they've just been introduced into the organization. Do you really think that they are willing to trade two of the best players ever? This is not an organization. Me. Hold on a second. Do you think that they yeah. were willing to trade two of the best players of their organization to do what? Because you can't they, get they, anyone else with their salaries. They, they don't, they, it's not like they do. I, I don't see them wanting to rebuild. Listen, I don't. you're not talking about okay. someone coming in on the Leafs who have just put this team together. This team has been together for 15 years. It's, it's either you blow it up okay. now. They, you move, you move some of the other pieces. You do not get rid of your, your, who do you move? Your Tell me someone players, who moves. That's your worth franchise moving. players. You don't do you move, move them. Knowing Brian Burke and the way he operates, he'll ship off whoever he needs to ship off and try and make his team better in an instant. I, Brian he Burke, not, knowing Brian Burke. He will not, he will not. Get rid of Crosby and Malkin. I don't Knowing see Brian Burke, he's going to trade all three of them, and he's going to bring in American players that are not that good. That's what Brian Burke. Does. Hey, let's let's be objective here. Come on, man. Let's, well, I am let's... being objective. That's what no, he's done for his no. entire. Tell me what. So ex... how? So he did that then. for. Did he do that for Calgary? Yes. Did he do that for Calgary? No, yes. he didn't do that for Calgary. He didn't do that for Calgary. Oh, okay. He didn't trade for Milan Lucic. Did he? He traded he for trade the other for, did trash bag. Did he trade for Milan Lucic? Yeah. No, he didn't. I know. I was testing you. Good work. Okay. I honestly didn't think you were going to know that, so I was just <sighs> testing you. Explain to I me. Know what he did for, I know what he did okay. for Toronto. I I'm it. not telling but you he's this. Not gonna make, he's not going to make the same mistakes like he did before. I'm not telling you this like I'm coming to you and I'm having ideas. Like, this is a rumor. This is a fact that they're actively shopping all three of these guys. And Sidney Crosby has expressed that he wants to stay 
in Pittsburgh. I know that. I, I, I get what you're saying, Campos, but I, I honestly think that this is just a way to sort of, you know, get under their skin to, like, start performing, okay? Like, if they're willing to stay for the team, if they want to stay for the team, they need to, like, show up. The three of them playing. are not going to win you anything because they don't have anyone to play with. But but they've won it before. Not with just the three of them. Okay, so get rid of the other players. But they don't the have anyone else. that's worth any value. Well, make some trades. I know, but there's nothing there to trade. They have no it's draft Always, picks. There's always a way. There's always a way. I don't okay. know, man. This is the rumor right now that, that Colorado is trying to get Sidney Crosby. So... All right, sure. That's With the rumor. Cap room. That's a major rumor right now. Okay. Uh, there's also Pittsburgh is Was saying it? they want a. It's, gonna big, be a, it's, a, it's a Crosby Crosby for McKinnon. Pittsburgh is saying they want a veteran goalie, and and they're not taking Flurry off the table of coming back to Pittsburgh. Uh, that I heard. That I've heard. And you know who's going to be involved in that trade? It's going to be one of those guys. So, and I would assume it would be Malkin for probably draft picks and Flurry. They don't have the cap room. So, if you that. get rid of Flurry, they do. <clears throat> but uh, Flurry, uh, Flurry is worth about what? I think it's like eight million. He's eight million. Listen, all I'm saying is that at this point, I wouldn't say anything's off the table with with how consistent and persistent these rumors have been. I, I know a move's going to happen. I Maybe I, I'm not disagreeing with you. I, I think it's hard for me to see that Crosby gets moved. But I can honestly see that they're going to move Latang. I, I see that happening for sure. I think you'll agree with that. And I think that Malkin <coughs> is not off the table. Especially if, it, if you could trade Malkin and bring back, like, uh, one of those young defensemen in Colorado. I'm, I don't know why I'm thinking of Colorado, but, like, if you could bring back a, a proven young player and two first round picks, you're not going to say no to that. Realistically, okay. right? Okay. So, uh, if I were another team, if, yeah, I think Malkin would probably be the, the one person out of the three that might get dealt. I but, think Latang. Because I don't think I don't think people want to take take on Latang because he's good been. Point. He's been uh, injured many, many times before. I and... never thought of that. That is that is a really good point. So, I, I don't know. I Honestly, I, and, um... and if I were Pittsburgh, Crosby ain't going anywhere. Yeah, I think, like, realistically, I don't, you're not going to, you don't want to trade Sidney Crosby. And I don't think what you would get back unless you got another star player would be worth making the trade. Um, but if you were to get, if you could give up Malkin and get a prospect, a young proven, a guy who's already three years in and is showing that he has the potential to be a star and two first round draft picks, I don't think I could say no if I'm Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh and I, can always trade Kapanen for like picks. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I mean, the, the two highest value players I would say are three that they have realistically are like Marino, but I don't see a lot of teams even caring that he exists. Uh, Gensel, but without Crosby, I don't see him being the player that he is. And Kapanen, but we've seen what Kapanen's worth. And uh, I don't think he was even worth a 15th round pick. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm happy that the Leafs made that trade. So, uh, I don't know. This is pretty iffy. Uh, it's nice to see that you had a, a fight on it because I think you made some good points. All right, back at you. Uh, but this, that's all I have for this episode. So you got anything? All right, guys. Uh, should be good. All right. Thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, and, uh, see us in the next episode.